In this short video, we are going to learn about the sliding decimal method of unit conversion within the metric system. When we think about the imperial system of measurements that's currently used in the United States, we know that there are conversions within this system as well. And so we can ask questions such as, how many inches are there in a foot? Or how many feet there are in a yard? Or even how many yards there are in a mile? To these questions, there's an answer, but rarely is there a good explanation of the reason why. And knowing that there are 12 inches in a foot doesn't necessarily help you remember that there are three feet in a yard, or that there are 1,682 yards in a mile, or whatever that conversion is. Those are things that you have to memorize or look up, and they're sort of just because. Even more striking, Knowing how many yards there are in a mile, that doesn't help you figure out how many tablespoons there are in a gallon, or how many pounds there are in a ton. Each different method of making measurements has their own conversions. And again, with this imperial system of measurements, knowing one set of conversions does not give you information about other conversions. We're going to see that this is different in the metric system, or the SI system. In the metric system, there is a base unit of measurement for each type of measurement that you're going to make. But then there is a consistent series of prefixes that can be used to modify that base unit when measurements need to be done at a scale different than that base unit. The same prefixes can help you with all conversions within the metric system. So I'd like to start by introducing you to the base units of measurement within the metric system. For measuring length, we have the meter, and the symbol for the meter is a lowercase m. For measuring volume, we have liter, and that's marked by a lowercase or a capital L. Either of those work. Gram is represented by a little g, and it's used for measuring mass. Degree centigrade is used for measuring temperature. And lastly, seconds are used for measuring time. Now, all of these base units of measurement, you can measure things that are significantly larger than the base unit of measure, or specifically smaller. For instance, a meter is about the height of a doorknob on the door. It's most similar, just slightly larger than a yard in the imperial system of measurement. Now, if you want to measure something that is smaller than that, let's say, for instance, I wanted to measure the length of a pencil, well, using a meter would likely be too large of a unit of measure to accurately measure that. But if we take that unit of measure and we break it down into smaller, even pieces, we suddenly have units that are easier to measure something like the length of a pen or a pencil. So a deci unit. The prefix deci means that we're taking that base unit of measure and breaking it into 10 even parts. So our base unit of measure is equal to 10 deci units, where each deci unit is one tenth of the base unit of measure. There's also a prefix centi, meaning we're taking that base unit of measure and breaking it up into 100 even pieces. The prefix milli means we're breaking it into 1,000 even pieces. And the prefix micro, which is designated by the prefix symbol of a lowercase mu, the Greek letter mu, that is one millionth. Centi and milli are lowercase c or lowercase m. There are also some metric prefixes when you're dealing with things that are much larger than the base unit of measure. The prefix kilo in front of a measurement means it's 1,000 times larger than that base unit of measure. The prefix mega means it's 1 million times larger than that base unit of measure. And the symbols for those, kilo is a lowercase k, mega is a capital M. Now that capital M mega is different than the lowercase m for milli, and is different than the lowercase mu for micro. Those are all different prefixes used within the system. And there's a relationship between these prefixes. As I had mentioned, one base unit of measurement is equal to 10 deci units. One base unit of measurement is equal to 100 centi units, whatever it is you're working with. But there's also a relationship between deci and centi. 
For each deci unit you have, that is equal to 10 centi units. And this relationship is constant, regardless of the unit being considered. Now, we don't often think about things in terms of decifeet or kilofeet. That's just not how the typical American unit of measurement works. But there is a unit of measure that you are familiar dealing with, and also with dealing in fractions of. And so imagine one US dollar is a base unit of measurement. It's a measurement of value. Well, if we take that one dollar and break it up into 10 even units of value, well, we actually have a coin for that, a unit of currency. It's called a dime. There are 10 dimes in one dollar, so each dime is equal to a deci dollar. Likewise, if we take that dollar and break it up into 100 even units of value, then we end up with a penny or a cent, and it requires 100 cents to make up the value of one dollar. Yet we also know there's a relationship between dimes and pennies. If you have a dime, how many pennies is that worth? One dime is 10 cents or 10 pennies. And so one decidollar is 10 centidollars. Every time you have deci and centi as units, that relationship between them is going to be established. When we are making these conversions within the metric system, there are many different ways you can do this. And if you know a method that works for you, that's great. The method I'm going to show you here is known as the sliding decimal method of unit conversion. And in the sliding decimal method of unit conversion, you need just a few things. One, you need a number line that's marked with the prefixes and where the base unit of measure would be found. And then you need to have a conversion. In this case, imagine we have 327 liters and we want to know how many centiliters that is. So going from 327 liters, how many centiliters is that? So when we're using the sliding decimal method of unit conversion, we need to figure out if the unit that we're starting with is larger or smaller than the unit that we are converting to. And so in this case, we started with liters and we are going to centiliters. Liters are larger than centiliters meaning the unit that we are converting to is smaller. When converting to a smaller unit, you move the decimal point to the right. The way we figure out how many spots to the right we'll be moving our decimal point has to do with the number line. Liters is our base unit of measure, and we want to go from our base unit of measure to the prefix centi. So we need to move that decimal point a total of two places to the right. Now, where is the decimal point? If we are not given a decimal point, the decimal point is always going to be to the right of the last digit that we're given. In this case, the decimal point is found to the right of the seven, and we want to move that decimal point on our number line from being to the right of base to being to the right of centi. And so that's going to be a movement of one, two spaces. So we take our decimal point and we move it one, two spaces, filling in zeros as there is room. And we find our answer goes from 327 liters to 32,700 centiliters. We had moved that decimal point two spots to the right. What if our conversion was a little different? We're still starting with 327 liters, but we want to know how many kiloliters that is. We need to determine if the unit we are converting to is larger or smaller than the unit that we're starting with. In this case, kiloliters are larger than liters. When converting to a larger unit, move the decimal point to the left. And so as we return to our number line, we see our decimal point is starting to the right of base. We want to move it so that it is to the right of kilo. And that is going to take one, two, three spaces. So the decimal point to the right of seven, we are going to move it one, two, 
three spaces. And so our answer is going to be 0 0.327 kiloliters. 327 liters is equal to 0 0.327 kiloliters. Now, one of the nice things about this particular method of unit conversion is that you can go between prefixes without ever having to stop at the base unit of measure if you didn't want to. So for instance, if we have 0 0.000075 megagrams, and again, that capital M is for mega, not for milli or micro. If we have 0 0.000075 megagrams, how many decigrams is that going to be? Looking at our number line, we want to start with a decimal point to the right of mega, and we want to end with a decimal point to the right of deci. And that will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 spaces that we need to move our decimal point. And so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven spaces, our answer is going to be 750 decigrams. This technique can be used to do the metric conversions that are in the worksheet for this week's lab. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask.